I wanted to just give an overview slash update of my NRL 22 rifle. It's May of 2021, so it's a good time to just sort of summarize everything and refresh it because the 2020-2021 NRL 22 season is over. Uh, the championships are at the end of this month, and we're going to be, be going into a new season come June 2021. And so since I've recorded my original video covering this rifle and my gear, I've made a couple of slight updates, uh, but let's just go ahead and dive into it. This is my NRL 22 rifle that I use for NRL 22 competitions. I shoot open class, as you can kind of see here. It's all still based off of my Voodoo Gunworks V22 barreled action. It's your standard V22 action, but with a 20-inch MTU barrel. This is a Bartling barrel, uh, 1 to 16 twist. A threaded barrel, but no, I don't run any attachments because I'm in California, so no suppressors. It has a Trigger Tech Diamond Pro Curve Trigger. It sits in a MPA, Masterpiece Arms, uh, BA Comp chassis. I have a 60-minute base on here with a Spur 6002 mount, which is for 36 millimeter main tubes, and that's required for this Zero Compromise Optic ZC527 uh, with the Impact 3 reticle or MPCT3 reticle. And then I have a Skypod by MDT. This is a Skypod Gen 2. It's not their um, shortest one. I believe that's the PRS model. This is like the standard, I think, or the second highest or second. It's not the shortest, but the second shortest model that you can get as far as the legs and the extensions are concerned. And that sort of kind of wraps up the rifle. It's a very quick breakdown. Um, it's pretty much the same thing as I ran last season and how it was set up for, you know, 2020, 2021. The only differences here is that I had I took off the Collis K525i and replaced it with this new ZCO uh, rifle scope. And then I had to change the mounts because the Collis K525i is a 34 millimeter main tube and so this one's 36, so I had to swap out the arc rings for a spur mount, the 6002. And then I decided to try the Skypod for this upcoming season and I picked this up a few months ago, but I still haven't written a review on it and I haven't recorded any footage or recorded a review or wrote a, written a re review yet. Um, I was using the Atlas Cal uh, from the previous season, and I still have that bipod. It's a good bipod, but I want to try the Skypod to see how that goes. And I've tried it in a couple matches so far, but we're going to go into the upcoming NRL 22 season running the Skypod. As far as the K525i, I still have that scope. I just moved it to my one of my centerfire guns, my 6mm Creedmoor. And sort of to summarize my rifle from last season, it shot well. Um, I thought it was a good rifle. The scope overall, the Collis K525i, I liked it. I still like it. Um, I never wrote a review on it, but I think I'm going to write kind of my, you know, one and a half years or whatever kind of wrap up of like what I experienced with it. And that's not really going to be a really a good review, but it's just Mike's should give me the opinion of how I feel about that rifle scope and what like any flaws that I found in it, how I like the left side windage and whatnot, which I never really used in NRL 22, but um, just kind of give feedback on that and how the controls are on the K525i were different than traditional controls because you have parallax on the top, right? You have the, t you have the parallax on the top with the elevation and then left side windage with the illumination on the right. And so, you know, that was kind of interesting to run and I think it's a nice, it's a nice kind of configuration, uh, in, but it takes getting used to. But now we're on the ZCO or the ZC527. And so far, so good. I've, I've only had this for a few weeks. Came out here with only one range day to kind of work with it. But so far, I am liking it. And we'll see how it goes for the next season coming up. Um, so that kind of wraps up this whole rifle. And then we'll dive into the gear. With regards to my NRL 22 gear and accessories, I'm going to carry a, a slightly unique kit because I'm a match director as well, so I have to carry a bunch of other stuff with me. Um, but this is kind of what I've been using uh, recently, and I'm going to be continuing to use this um, Harbor Freight, I guess they call it an Apache case. It's a, it's a Pelican clone, but I got it really cheap, so it, it works out for me. Um, but inside this, I kind of carry my magazines in these Armageddon gear magazine kind of pouches and holds three and so I have uh, three of the mags here and I actually took one out for uh, I don't know where it went here it is so it carries three in each one and so I keep my mags here so I have one of these two of these and then I think I have a third one in here somewhere no I only have yeah third so I have three of these so I have, I have nine mags um, six polymers two billet mag ten rounders and one five round billet mag um, 
Inside this, I also carry um, my Fix-It Sticks kit. This is kind of a, I think they call it a double pouch or whatever, but it carries all of my stuff in it. Uh, it's got my torque limiters and three different types of Fix-It Stick tools. That's, you know, the ratcheting one, the locking one, and then just your your original one. And I have so many different bits for a, you know, metric and imperial so and torques. So I use this. This is kind of like a must-have if I ever need to fix something. I have my Kestrel 5700. Um, this is the applied ballistics version. I've had this for a while. I'll carry this with me in a, I think this is a, what is this? The FHF gear pouch. So I carry that. And I carry a, uh, this is my trusty Sig Kilo 2000. I know a lot of people don't like this Sig Kilo 2000s, but a lot of people do. It's like a 50-50. Um, in general, I found it to be pretty good, but I know people have some bad luck with these, but I've had no problem with the Sikilo 2000. Granted, what I've ranged has been pretty, um, I don't know, pretty simple stuff. I have never tried it in like extreme conditions or very small targets. Although in very small targets, it doesn't work as well because you need a finer beam, but I don't want to dive into that, um, those details too much. Um, I also carry in my kit, um, or I'm trying to dig around here, stable gun, don't worry about that. Uh, Shot timer, which is critical for um, matches because you need a shot timer to run a squad. But I also keep this for practice because it's nice to be able to, uh, you know, time yourself while you're shooting in drills. And I have um, these Armageddon gear uh, single pouches. They go onto your belt or a molly, but these are good. I keep one on my belt line, so I have a spare mag on me when I'm on a stage and if I have a malfunction or something, I can easily drop the mag and put a new one in. Um, there's a bunch of uh, bags here. So I have several bags on this bench and um, my primary one, so why don't we, why don't we step back? Um, you're limited to one, you used to be limited to one bag in previous NRL 22 seasons, one bag on the stage or for every stage, they usually say you only allowed one piece of equipment per NRL 22 rules. Going into the next season, this upcoming NRL 20, uh, 22, 2021 slash 2022 season, they've changed it so there's no equipment restrictions. There's a line item that says there are no equipment restrictions now. What does that mean? Oh, sorry. No equipment restrictions, but there's going to be no tripods. I think there's no tripods. But, or I, think, there, I can't remember the words, but no tripods allowed. So what does no equipment, res no equipment restrictions mean? Everyone assumes that means multiple bags. So you're going to be able to have multiple bags on a stage unless I hear differently or I read differently, but that's how it's going to be interpreted. Before um, the NRL 22 uh, in past seasons, I just ran the Armageddon Gear slash Razor Precision. This is their pint size game changer. Um, this is the wax canvas one. This is like kind of like my favorite one. Uh, this is my trusty one that I always carry whenever I go to the range um, and I'm shooting a rifle. I'll bring this with me because it's great for a rear bag. Um, in my opinion, it's great for a rear bag, and then uh, especially off a bench, and then it's great for you know all-purpose use. I have this one. This is a custom one that was courtesy of a person named Matt. He has a channel called Long Fat. He's out in Canada. He made this um, and sent it to me to try out a, a year and a half ago or so, and I think it was actually a really nice bag. I mean, it's it's Cordura, I assume. It's nylon Cordura, and it's got a. It's, it's a little bit more flexible than wax canvas. It's lighter. And frankly, I used to like, I like heavy, but I've gotten used to using this one because it has some unique characteristics in terms of it flattening out a lot better to like just be paper thin when I need it to be. Like not paper thin, but pretty thin in the, in the middle wedge that I can use it on this range that we're sitting, standing at now where we're shooting at an elevation. And so whenever I need to, or an up angle. So if I need to get my rifle up in the bottom down as far as possible to the ground this actually works pretty well so i've got this one and i've got all variants of the the game changer i've got this also it's another pint size game changer but this is the area 4019 version with the plate which i may or may not use this i've actually not used this um in past nrl 22 matches um but maybe i'll find use for it but i don't know if i will then i've got the Wee bad. This is the pint. I guess they call it a pint size version. Of mini wee bad. This is our mini wee bad fortune cookie. This is actually a pretty good bag. It's uh, got some unique characteristics compared to the um, Armageddon slash Razor Precision Game Changer. I, this actually, I like this better on kind of rail barricades or anything where you need this to sit uh, and wedge on top of a 
of a like a railing or something i find this to be actually better than this um i don't know it just it's it seems to just squeeze down better um it's a little bit larger and it's not as flexible but this is a good bag but i carry this in my in my vehicle and uh even though you're allowed only one you were only allowed one bag or one piece of equipment in past courses of fire uh per stage or whatever you know, I switched between different bags for different stages. So, I mean, that was that was always allowed. But now that, I mean, you can have multiple bags, you maybe find a different combination. Anyway, moving on, then I've got this original Game Changer. This is a Cordura nylon version. Um, this is actually, I use I use this more for Centerfire, but I, I don't know why I don't use it for, for NRL 22. It's actually, it's really big, and I think it, uh, it, it works pretty well. I just, for some reason, I just always went to the pint size, but I may start using this a little bit more. Who knows? I just, I have so many bags. I really don't know what to do there, but I try to keep it simple with just this one. But I think if any, anything has come about with these changes, allowing more than multiple bags on um, NRL 22 stages, it's going to be the uh, we bad pump pillow. So I recently acquired this. Uh, I never really shot. I never really shoot PRS or NRL like just center fire action matches. So I never bothered to invest in this thing. And now that they're allowing NRL 20 US, I figure, hey, why not just get one of these because it is handy, it's nice to have. So um, it, there's a lot of stages where you're gonna be shooting um, off a prop or whatever, and then you're gonna be in an awkward position where you can't get a stable position with your shooting arm or sh you know, your shooting elbow. It'd be nice to have this wedge in here between your body to kind of get more support. Also on your leg, if you're kind of kneeling down and have your leg up and you're on a low prop so this is going to provide an advantage in combination with another bag when you're using it to rest on your barricade or whatever so now i have like now you're going to be running two bags um with your you know your support bag and your body support bag um kind of just simplistic approach to that but anyway with as far as going into this upcoming season with this new you know with the new rules regarding equipment this is probably the only change i'm going to make on a stage of fire is I'm gonna run two bags. If I run two bags, it's gonna be something that, on the barricade if I need it, and then a body support bag. Um, we'll see how that goes, but that's pretty much the only change I'm gonna to make to my kit. This has kind of been my kit from the last season with the addition of this pump pillow. Um, and one more thing before, we, before I forget is, um, I forgot to show you on the rifle here. I forgot to mention one rifle attached accessory that I've changed to is this Coltac uh, cheat sheet, they call it. It's basically this hook and loop tab that you just simply uh, use some kind of bungee cord to attach to your scope. And then you have these, these uh, plastic cars that you just attach to it. It's really nice. I like this a lot better than the Blam, Blam Enterprises or Blam Industries uh, dope card holder that I was using in the past season. So I switched this because, and or two seasons ago rather, but I was running this last season as well because NRL 22 included this in the membership kit. I think uh, the membership came, kits came out a little late last year. And so um, we got them later in 2020, but I s switched to this around whatever, August or September or something. But I like this one. It folds out of the way when you don't really need it. It just flops and so it doesn't catch on anything. And I can just leave it on here and not really care. And then, um, you know, frankly, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty, uh, you know, unobtrusive. So I really like this one. So, uh, I'm, I don't know if you can, if you want to buy this you can get it from Coltac NRL 22 gave these for free in the, uh, NRL 2020, uh, membership kit. So I don't know if they'll include that into this year's membership kit, but it's a really nice, uh, nice, uh, dope card holder. So I like that one. That wraps up the breakdown of my NRL 22 rifle and supplementary gear for the NRL 22 2021 2022 season really wanting to get some real life you know competition use uh, and our experience with the zc 527 scope and the mdt skypod gen 2. i think both of these new um, additions slash updates to this rifle um, will be great and i just want to have some under pressure time based competition just experience with this so i can give you more of a you know better opinion of the scope and the bipod as they compare to my prior scope and bipod on this rig, the Collis K525i and the Atlas Cal. Both of those two items are great, but you know, I'm always trying, looking to try something new. And these two new items, you know, 
they're on the even higher echelon in, as far as price and sort of reputation, I guess. And I don't say reputation, Atlas and Collis have good reputations. Um, but these are kind of higher on the price tier and sort of what their perception is of their quality or whatever, or what they offer. So I want to see how these two compare to those two items. And I really do like the Atlas Cal and I still have it. I'm not going to get rid of that because it's a great bipod and I can use it on my other guns. And I'm not getting rid of my Kalski 525i. As I mentioned, that's also moved to my centerfire gun, and that's a great scope too. If you have any questions on this gun, any of the gear for NRL22, feel free to uh, reach out to me. Um, you can comment in the on this video, and I'll try to answer your questions. And if you're interested in NRL22, head out to a match, uh, visit the NRL22 website, and just go uh, check it out and see if you're interested in it. I think it's a, it's a good format. It's, you know, people are saying that it's getting a little more complex. It might be becoming a gear race. I don't think so. It's only a gear race if you make it a gear race. You can keep it simple, you can do well, and you don't need to buy all this stuff that you see here. Um, have fun with it. I mean, I've shot different types of matches or different types of disciplines before, and I think NRL 22 is great for beginners. Um, as, uh, as a match director, I'm trying to always make the matches open to beginners. I've, I've done what I can to kind of simplify certain things and just to make sure that everyone who is brand new to this style of shooting can come out and sort of try it out and then learn and then hopefully they'll want to come back and shoot again. So anyway, thanks for watching this. Hopefully you got some good information about it and I'll hopefully you can watch more of my videos later on. Thank you.